You and your police state, how dare you? Bite his ankles, Theo, bite him! <laughs> Something that Pixel really loves doing is cozying up right next to your legs and getting all cuddly and nuzzly with your ankles and then all of a sudden you'll feel like her little jaw wrap around your ankle and then she'll just bite. And it's just like the most gratuitous action that she's ever done. It's so funny. Uh, anyways, the avoidance of these sentinels is still required, so let's be a little careful if you try to go this way. Obviously, this one is not going to move, which is a shame, so we'll go this way. We'll go down this part. Uh, keep in mind, if you meow, uh, they will still be alerted to your presence. So, yeah, there you go. I figured you were there. So that's why you're going to want to hide in a box. Yeah, that's basically it. So keep in mind, that's the thing to do. Uh, when going through inaccessible stairwells. It's not a fun bit of business, but it's also not the most difficult in the world, so. I in here. And hope you don't get me, please. There you go. There you go. Alright. Let's keep on going over here. It's gentle. And let's skip across. There we go. Let's keep on going up the stairs. You'll be fine. Okay, so this one also doesn't move, so this is the point where we jump across the signs here. Yeah, there we go. And this one right outside her place is so annoying. Because the second you try to come out of it, he will always be looking at you. It's not fair. <laughs> Alright, so we're back. Clementine, I think they're looking for you. I don't know what I did, but it did not make the cops happy, which means we succeeded. Now, wait. Huh, no sign of Clementine. Wait, there's some kind of coded message. We're gonna have to play detective to figure out what happened. For B12 and the cat, the answer lies in my stuff. Okay, <laughs> thank you, you couldn't have just left it there. So, apparently we gotta look for a diffuser, a crystal, a <laughs> traffic cone with legs, and a lava lamp. Not a floor is lava lamp, no, certainly not. Oh. And we can inspect this. Oh, right. Okay, so sometimes there will be red herrings where you can quote unquote inspect it, but there won't be anything there. Yeah, there's a bunch of those. So let's start with the old air diffuser. This is cute. So detecting harmless chemicals in a gaseous state. I had read that like burning like scent diffusers is bad for cats, so Sarah never does it. But uh, there's also a message. I'm with blank, 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 block, blank, block, block. And because we left this lovely drawer out on our prior visit, everything is fine for this little nook here. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Chill beats to make biscuits, too. <laughs> Just in case you needed another nap. But with this music here, I mean, wouldn't you want to? So, let's get back to work. Got a nice little scritch in there. Still haven't hydrated in a minute for Theo. But over here, we have a crystal. This gem is of medium value and low purity. It seems to have been added artificially. All right, so. Ooh, Blazer. So you're with Blazer. Okay, so I'm guessing the other ones probably tell us where. No, perhaps? Well, here's the cone head. <laughs> Something about characters in this game and their cones, man. Yeah, this is what the way the companions see humans. All right, so. Oh, we have to come to somewhere. Well, where in the world do you think I'm gonna come to in the middle of the kitchen where this is the perfect spot to hide a incredible LED lava lamp? This is kind of cool. <laughs> it's glow is kind of memorizing. Mesmerizing. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, neither did I. So, the nightclub, of course, as you could have imagined. That's it. Well done, Lieutenant Cat. Let's go find her. We don't have time. No, we don't. Now, this is the part that gets annoying. Whatever you do, just try to look out the window and see if you can see the glow. There it is. You see the sentry. It'll always see you if you're, like, just poking your face out right there, so... Let's do this, and once again, we can just go down these signs here. You just have to be careful for, you know, that one right there, doing its own business. So I'm just going to wait one more, and if you haven't gotten caught, this is where your trophy will pop. 
Because ladies and gentlemen, we have hit the sneak kitty jackpot. Hell yeah. Okay. So like I mentioned, things are in a slightly different space than they were before. You got some kind of upset people here. Uh, how's it going? Did you finally figure out how to turn off the <laughs> damn uh, radio? Hi, I'm right here. Hi, Ozzy. Asshole. And it looks like the nightclub is finally open. How's it going, Jima? Hate this club. It's full of posers. At least there's no sentinels. Oh, tell me about it. We got Miko. We got Simon. This dude's been everywhere. Yeah, we're gonna have to climb at the back again. Wow, Simon literally straight up just tells you that. All right. So, of course, it's not for me. That's fine. I will just sneak in, and my friend Albert, the cone-wearing custodian, is going to tell us exactly how to get up there. How's it going, Albert? Work hard to clean the streets, only for others to mess it up again. Maybe I should stop sweeping with this broom, you know? <laughs> Alright. So, once again, we're climbing up, but we're going this way. And, <gasps> sweet Jesus. Look, at, it's a, it's a Mr. Pimptacular 900. How's it going, sir? His name is Laticula. Laticula. <laughs> I'm doing great. He's having a grand old time. He's on that sweet, sweet diesel. <laughs> so if we head over here, uh, we got a couple of bees we can knock off. There we go. And then kind of another one of those pointless doors that you can just scratch at. Just in case you haven't done that enough already. I don't know what the downstairs neighbors are up to. I keep hearing buzzsaw and hammer noises. That's kind of scary. Is that someone else down there? There is somebody different down there. I've never seen that guy before. Hold on. Let's take a look. Let me see if I can't come down to the bottom of this mystery. Surgery? I have no business here unless you want your legs replaced by something more fancy. Wow, this guy's an asshole. Wow. I wonder if they ever made DLC for this game. If this is something that would be like, uh, I don't know, available to us. But that's dark. There's just body parts out here. All right. Man. And just for future Allison's case, if you manage to hear that out of context, I am still playing Stray, so. <laughs> Anyways, this is our new friend. His name is Alex. Hey, how's it going? I do want to party. Let's get a drink. I want in. Nice. Welcome to the club, ladies and gentlemen. This place is freaking badass. I love that I just get to, like, step on this dude's back. This is literally Ori, by the way. <laughs> but there's a couple of things we can do here. We can maybe speak with some of the patrons or otherwise just really upset them by knocking off their very important drinks. But of most importance is this strange drink. I'm just gonna go ahead and yoink that. And we're gonna take this dumb waiter down. <laughs> and this is gonna take us to kind of an interesting little room. Kinda neat. Our final memory. Oh, someone setting up a little date night here? What's going on? When I was human, my friends and I would gather and party long into the night, even if we had to suffer the annoying consequences. The next morning, it felt good to find joy despite the unlivable surface. Yeah, this person has never even experienced, I guess, the outside, it seems. Now we're talking about capitalism and the police state created by sentinels. Yeah. Cool, so that is all of the memories recovered here in Midtown, chapter uh, 10. So we're pretty close to the end and uh, it's gonna be something else, my friends. Let me tell you something, oof. So we're gonna come on up and with our strange drink in hand, there is a very specific NPC we need to speak to. Uh, but first, let's speak to the bartender. I love your bucket hat, man. Access to the VIP balcony is closed. Some private biz is going on up there. It's been reserved by Blazer. Wow. They straight up tell you Blazer is up here with a bot ham Lincoln. Good God. All right, cool. I've never spoken to the bartender before, apparently. You got some dancing bozos here. Oh, it's you. Hey, it's the Johnny Nine impersonator or Johnny Five. How's oh, that is pretty cool, man. Did you make it yourself? Yeah, thought so, Viv. Jams the Sentinel scans, and it looks cool. Oh, there you go. That'd be kind of a cool little thing to know, I think. So, there's a man who is randomly holding a lever. I don't know what it's for or why he's doing it, but 
and I tried to go to that stupid VIP room. They kicked me out. Can you believe it? So I stole this lever for kicks. So we'll go ahead and trade him because, you know, I'm going to need that more than he does. There you go. Thank you. Meanwhile, this guy's just like, uh, I'm good. This is interesting. Also, creepy. So something to make note of is there is a place for us to pull a lever right here. And what that'll do is get rid of the dancer. So what one of the DJs is going to do is pull it back up. But this one is missing the lever. So I'll just go ahead and toss that there. And same thing here. This one can now go down. But that's the one we need because that won't lead to anywhere. So how's it going, my friend? It's good to see you. Wonder what you're supposed to be doing here. I'll meet you guys in just a second because one of my favorite things in this entire game has to do with scratching some vinyl. Head over here, grab yourself a nice little slice of life and make your way back up and set it right there. How's it going, man? Yeah, hey everybody, DJ Matt C here. Let's get the party started. The first song has been requested by our very questionable friend, Blazer. All right, well, you know what I have to say about that? That is all, my friends. <laughs> all right, so. Now that the lever is placed and we have put the vinyl in its place, we are going to go and step on this so that when he puts it up, we will now be raised to the VIP level. There we go. Nice. Now, this is actually a little bit easier than you would think. We have to get clear over there by going atop the lights here. So I'm going to go and just start pressing buttons, mostly at random, but this is exactly what I did the first time I played this. I just went from left to right, and then with just one more press, we're set. So, perfect. Everything is set in place. Let's make our way over. Ah, I see you over there. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, he's walking away. Yeah, so I guess if you hadn't spoken to the bartender, you wouldn't really know who that was. But it's odd that Blazer would happen to be here, too. And I, I guess that's who Clementine was meeting with. So, hey, how's it going? It's a Botham Lincoln. Or Raph, I guess. Oh, I don't understand why people complain so much about them. What about this battery? I don't think it'll be interested in what you have to give me. I already have access to everything. Of course you do. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? I'm going to get rid of your gross drinks here. There you go. This is the worst diesel I've ever tasted in my life. I don't think there's anything else here. We got some interesting <laughs> pictures on the table there. Thank you, depth of field. All right, wait, Clementine. Wait, no. We've been double crossed, we've been duped. You're not as clever as you look, little cat. Business is business. Also, how can Clementine not speak just by having, like, a piece of rope wrapped around her speaker? Well, he values money more than friendship or camaraderie. Blazer, you dick. 